This is a demonstration of the Satellite Explorer Pro program. It's currently running on an iOS simulator on a Mac laptop. The program will run on an iPhone, an iPad, an iPod Touch. It will not run on a Mac. To start the program, we click on the icon and the screen that shows up shows a tracking map for the currently selected satellite. Remember this is a tool for locating satellites. It's not a game. The currently selected satellite is the International Space Station. Its location is shown right here by this little circle with a dot in the middle. The coverage circle for the satellite is the yellow circle and the dashed dots here show the track. The current location, our current location, is shown by this little pinkish red rectangle which is uh, right now near Middleton, Wisconsin which is near Lake Michigan. To determine the position of the satellite relative to our location, we look at these little text boxes down here. The current azimuth is 181 degrees. The current elevation is minus 38 degrees, which means it is below the horizon. AOS is at uh, 319 and LOS is at 324. This is for the next pass. Uh, the max elevation during that pass is only 3.2 degrees. The current range is shown here and the height which is the height of the satellite above the surface of the earth is shown here. There are some segmented controls down at the bottom here. This first one allows switching the time between local and UTC. You can see here. And this one switches the distances from miles to kilometers, which we can do right here. These values are safe, so you don't have to uh, fool with them every time you run the program. The satellite, you can select different satellites by clicking on the satellite name box. Now, you might have noticed that there were a number of text boxes that were in bold face. This one, this one, this one, and this one. These text boxes, in addition to displaying a value, also cause an action to be performed if, if you tap on them. So the sat name box is bold, so if you tap on that, a list of the satellite names show up, and you can select whichever one of these you want from this list. The location, our location is something that you have to set and you might notice that the My Grid text box is also bold. If you tap on that one, a My Location screen pops up. It shows your current location in uh, grid locator form and latitude and longitude. Uh, to alter one of these you can just tap on the appropriate little box. So if you wanted to change the grid the on-screen screen keyboard pops up. You could change it to whatever you want. When you're done with that hit the return key. If you wanted to uh, change the latitude or longitude just click on that and away you go. Again, press the return key when you're done. So you can either enter in latitude, longitude, or you can enter, enter in the grid location. It really doesn't matter. Um, if you have really accurate uh, data, the latitude and longitude is, is better. Uh, the iDevices have different types of 
location determination circuitry in them. Depending on what type of device you have, you will have one or more of these. Uh, a GPS, uh, cellular, or Wi-Fi. And the location data can be determined in the most optimum way that they can from whatever is available on your system. So this shows the latitude, the longitude, and uh, the grid. Um, this actually updates in real time, so if you're walking around or driving around, you can see all this change in your grid. Uh, if you decide you wanted to use, one of, use this data, you just click on this button, and the current network data is located in here. When these numbers are the way you want them, you can click on OK to go back to the main screen, or you can click on the Cancel button to ignore these changes. So we'll just click on the OK button, and we can see our grid has changed. It shows me living in uh, Southern California. I'm not there, but that's where the simulator thinks I am. <laughs> Um, you can switch groups. Now each of these groups, if we tap on the group text box, which you notice is in bold phrase, face, uh, currently three groups or four groups show up. Uh, stations, which is primarily international space station sorts of things. Amateur, which is sort of ham radio oriented stuff. Uh, CubeSats, which are the small satellites that uh, are now extremely easy to build and uh, are launched in the large numbers of them, and some NOAA satellites. So if you click on a group, for example, if we click on the uh, CubeSat group, then this changes to CubeSat, and now the satellites that are displayed over here uh, change. And you can pick any one of those you want. So we could go back to the group, pick the amateur satellites, and pick another one of those. Now one of the things that gets sort of difficult is keeping track of all of these satellites. There's a lot of them out there and most people are not interested in all of them. So to simplify things, uh, I've added something called favorites. Now, when you look over here, you see there's only currently four groups. Um, and there's a button down here that we haven't talked about. It says favorite add. When you click on this, it will add whatever satellite you're currently looking at uh, to a group called favorites. Now, when the program starts, there are no satellites in the favorite group, so it does not show up. Uh, so we'll add this AO27 by clicking on this button. If we go back here, we'll notice another group has shown up called Favorites. If we click on that, we can see currently the only satellite that's in that group uh, is AO27. Um, if we wanted to add another satellite to that group, say we wanted to add uh, the International Space Station, we could go over to the Stations group, uh, select the International Space Station, and then click on the Add button. Uh, if we wanted to add uh, CubeSat to that favorite group, if you had something that was of interest to you, select it and click on the Favorite Add button. If we go back to the Favorites, we can now see that the three satellites that we added to our favorite group are in there. Uh, this is very handy so you don't have to hunt through uh, all of those lists of satellites if you're only interested in a few. Now you for sure will have some satellites in your favorites group that you may want to get rid of. Uh, you may notice that have noticed that when you're in the favorites group this button changes to favorite remove. Um, it doesn't make any sense to add a favorite to something that's already there. So to reduce the buttons and clutter here, um, 
when you're in the favorites group this will remove the currently selected satellite from your favorites group so if we didn't want this one UWE anymore we could select it click on the favorite remove now we're not removing the satellite from the system so it still shows up here but it's removed from the favorites group so when we look at the favorites group we can see there's now only two left um, if we wanted to get rid of this one we can do it now there's only one in there in the group which is this one we could select it and remove that one now currently there are no favorites in the favorite group so since there aren't any in there it doesn't show up the AOS button is also um, shown in boldface. If you click on that, a list of several upcoming passes, starting with the current one, uh, the AOS, LOS, and max elevation are shown for those over the next um, several passes. Uh, notice it's currently in UTC. If you wanted them in local time, you go back here change to local and click on this again and now these are displayed in local time um, there is online help here so if you click on the help button some help information is displayed that may be of use to you the only other thing is the web update button which will cause the current information uh, from the internet to be downloaded so you know if we wanted to get more current information about these satellites we could just click on that button and uh, current data will be downloaded you do not have to have internet access to use the program uh, it stores values locally and they will use those so it's a uh, Kind of a pretty neat little program here. Hope you like it. 73s.